We start the meditation with thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill is a wish for happiness. We hope that we will find true happiness and other beings will find true happiness. Because true happiness comes from within, there's no conflict there. It's just a question of remembering where true happiness comes from. It comes from your actions, your thoughts, your words, your deeds. So when we wish true happiness for ourselves, we basically set forth the wish, may we be skillful in what we do. May we not harm anyone. And then when you wish happiness for others, may they not harm anyone. Because after all, each person is responsible for his or her own actions. This is why we meditate. Our actions come from our intentions. Our intentions come out of the mind. And so if you want your actions to be skillful, you have to start by training the mind. And one of the things you train it in is this intention not to harm. When external actions, it means not killing, stealing, having illicit sex, lying, taking intoxicants. When you can hold to those precepts, then there's a sense of self-worth, that you are a person, who, a principal person who doesn't stoop to things that would harm other people. When you have those qualities in your mind, then it's a lot easier to look at your mind to see what's going on. This is one of the reasons why one of the prerequisites for meditation is a life of virtue and a life of generosity. Because if you're stingy and unprincipled in your actions, and then you watch your mind, and you're going to be seeing a mind that's not very good to watch. And if you just tell yourself, well, that's okay, I'll, I'll be equanimous about whatever comes up, you get very careless and very callous. But if you're more sensitive to the fact that, okay, you're not doing any harm to anybody, there is that sense of well-being. It's a lot easier to see what's going on in your mind and to find areas where you're still not skillful. Because that's the next step after the thoughts of goodwill, then you focus on your breath to give the mind a good place to stay. Learn how to breathe in a way that feels good. It feels refreshing coming in, refreshing going out. You're not squeezing it out. You're not stuffing it in. It feels good, though, flowing throughout the whole body. It gives the mind a sense of well-being right here, right now. It's not, it's not so hungry for greed, aversion, and delusion, and all the other things that might make it do unskillful things. And because it's still and here in the present moment, you can watch it clearly. Whenever there's a movement in the mind in any direction, good or bad, you can see it. If it's going in a good direction, you can encourage it if this is the right time for that. Although sometimes you just tell yourself, okay, even good thoughts, you have to put them out of this, your mind for the time being because you want to focus on getting the mind really still. But good thoughts are easier to put aside. It's those unskillful thoughts, the ones that want to cause harm. Those are the ones you really have to fight against. So give the mind a sense of well-being right here. It's a lot easier to fight off the unskillful thoughts. When you get more control over your mind in this way, then it's a lot easier to have some control over what you do and say and think, and be thoughtful and mindful in what you do and say and think. So that your good intentions become more than just good, they become skillful, because you've learned from your mistakes. You've learned from times when you've done things right. In this way, happiness becomes a skill, and you begin to realize that happiness depends on goodness. In other words, the good quality of your intentions. And when you can think in those ways, then there's not, not a lot of conflict inside. It's when we think that our happiness is one thing, our goodness is something else. That's when there's conflict. A while back I went online, wanted to check goodness in Amazon, just see what they had for goodness. It was all about good cakes and good pies and good cookies. That's what goodness has become in our country. The thing about the Buddha is that you can find goodness by being generous, by being virtuous, by training the mind in goodwill. And that kind of goodness goes a lot longer than just a good cookie or a good cake. It sets your mind in the right direction, it sets your life in the right direction. And you find that the happiness that comes from that kind of goodness really does go deep.